Bonjour and welcome to Dossier 1, Lesson 1, Part 2. This begins on page 28. So, présenté. And um, if you look at page 28, that image shows something like a network of people. It is called Interlingua. And you can see Apprendre et pratiquer les langues up there. Apprendre et pratiquer les langues avec une communauté mondiale. It's more or less like what we are doing online so that you create a network of friends around the world and you are able to learn different languages. But now on this um, specific website, Interlingua, uh, it has got 9 million people with 38 languages. 9 million de personnes et 38 langues. So then what happens if you want to get to that network? then you need to subscribe. And when you subscribe, there is this form that you fill. And at the top, it's written, inscription gratuite. Now, that means that um, the registration is free to that site. And you can see the details that are required. Votre langue maternelle, that is your mother tongue. Autre langue, other language that you speak, of course, vous apprenez the language that you are learning or studying. Votre age, votre age is basically your age, your age. Votre adresse email, your email address. Votre mot de passe, uh, your uh, password. Confirmez votre mot de passe. Confirmez votre mot de passe. Confirm your password. So now, um, when you go to that website, that is the kind of information that you are required to fill. So now, as an activity, let's look at activity 8. Activité 8. Vrai ou faux? Vrai ou faux? Regardez la page d'accueil d'Interlingua et répondez. Regardez la page d'accueil d'Interlingua et répondez. Look at the homepage of Interlingua and respond. So then, part one is saying, Interlingua est une école de langue. Interlingua est une école de langue. So we have four statements here that you are supposed to respond to and say whether they are vrai ou faux. Vrai means true and faux means false. So is it true or false? Number one, Interlingua est une école de langue. Interlingua est une école de langue. Interlingua is a language school or is a school of languages. Is that true or false? Definitely, that is straightforward. It is true. Um, you need to respond to the second question. Les personnes utilisent Interlingua pour apprendre une langue étrangère. People use Interlingua in order to learn a foreign language. In order to learn a foreign language. Vrai ou faux? So you need to say whether it is true or false. Number three. C'est possible de pratiquer 45 langues avec interlingua. C'est possible de pratiquer C'est uh, possible de pratiquer 45 langues avec interlingua. It's possible to practice 45 Languages with interlingua. Is that true? Number four. L'inscription à interlingua est gratuite. The registration on interlingua is free. True, vrai ou faux? That should be easy for you. Let's go to activity nine. Lisez les profits de trois utilisateurs d'interlingua. Now, read the profiles of three users of interlingua so we have different users at the bottom of the page you will see there are three uh, different users those who um, have registered on that website uh, on until interlingua so you have uh, the first one is roberto the second one is ming and uh, the Third one is uh, Ven. Now, um, if you read their profiles, because 
Each one of them has given details of themselves. Um, you are supposed to read that. And after that, you need to respond to certain questions here. Um, identifier le profil qui correspond à l'inscription sur la page d'accueil. Identify the profile that responds to the registration on the home page. Number two, dites pourquoi Roberto communique avec Ming Even. Say why Roberto communicates with Ming and Ven. Why do you think he is able to communicate with the two? And then the th third uh, uh, activity is Dites qui vous voulez contacter. Dites qui vous voulez contacter. Now, considering the profiles of the three, who among the three would you like to contact on Interlingua? That is Siu Interlingua and then Justifier. So, who among the three would you like to com contact and justify your answer? So, let's go to those uh, three profiles. Should be able to to read them. So, using your course book, look at each one of them, go through them, and see if you are able to answer the questions. If you are able to answer the questions. For example, uh, the first profile of Roberto. Roberto says, um, if you look at his profile, his name is Roberto Sanchez. Age, age is his age. Age, 23 ans, 23 years old. Brève présentation, that is a brief presentation. Je suis Mexican, I'm Mexican. J'ai 23 ans, I am 23 years old. J'étudie le commerce international. J'étudie le commerce international. I study international business. Et, and, le samedi j'apprends le chinois. And um, on Saturday I, I study, um, and on Saturday I study Chinese. Dans une école de langue, in a language school. Je suis bilingue. I am bilingual. Je parle espagnol et français. I speak Spanish and French. Je ne parle pas bien anglais. I don't speak, or I don't speak English well. Je voudrais, I would like, and then he is supposed to tick uh, one of the three choices there. Je voudrais, the first option is apprendre une langue, to study a language. Number two, aider les autres à apprendre ma langue, help others learn my language. Communicate avec les gens, uh, to communicate with people. So he ticked the, his, what he would like to do. So in his case, his profile, he says he would like to communicate avec les gens, to communicate with the people. So the contacts he has, he has got Ming and Ven. Those are the contacts on his profile. So if you look at the other profiles of Ming and the other colleague of theirs, then you can be able to tell who, uh, what they're saying on their profiles. Activity 10. Associer les informations aux personnes. Link the information to the persons. That is Roberto, Ming, and Ven. Number 1. Ils ont 23 ans. Ils ont 23 ans. Who are these who are 23 years old? The statement says, Ils ont 23 ans. That means they are 23 years old. So, who are they? Identify from the profile who and who have got 23 years. Number two, Il étudie les langues. Il étudie les langues. That means he studies languages. So, who among the three studies languages? Number three, Ils ne sont pas français. Ils ne sont pas français. They are not French. So, who among the three are not French? Number four, Elle accourt à l'université tous les matins. She has uh, a course at the university every morning. She has a course at the university every morning. Who is that? And then number five, Ils n'ont pas cours 
le mardi après-midi. They don't have, uh, they don't have uh, courses or they don't have class uh, on Tuesday afternoon. They don't have class or they don't have a course on Tuesday afternoon. Who are they? So you should be able to read the profile and identify those persons. Now let's look at point long. Now looking at point long, point long is basically the grammar part of it. And on point long, we are talking about le verbe avoir à l'indicatif présent. This is a verb uh, called avoir. Avoir in English is to have. So it is in its present tense, to have. Complete avec on, et, avait, and a. Now you need to be able to conjugate the verb avoir in different um, forms so that you are able to tell. For example, to, if you want to say I have, you say j'ai, j'ai. And therefore that uh, space there, the space here is filled by ai, j. And now you see the second person singular is tu a. And then the third person singular is il or l. Can you guess that? Then in plural we have nous avons. And therefore in plural again for you in plural is vous, vous avez. And then the third one il, that is they, masculine and they, feminine. Then you fill in that space. Already we have seen some examples up here. You can be able to tell. If not, go to, um, you can also go to exercise number four on page 40. So when you turn to page 40, um, exercise number four, you'll find a similar task. Le verbe avoir à l'indicatif présent. That is page 40, exercise 4. Complété avec les formes suivantes. So you also have choices. Avant, en, et, a, et, avait, a. So you need to feel, for example, tu as quel âge? What is your age? Tu as quel âge? And the response would be, j'ai 18 ans. Vous avez des contacts? Oui. Nous avons des contacts. Anglophone et francophone. So um, that is about conjugation of the verb avoir. So then uh, let's look at the second point long. And this part now, we are going to talk of another um, exercise, and this is la négation. La négation is to negate. Um, la négation, and when you want to negate a sentence, you use two words, ne and pa, ne and pa, and in between you put a verb. For example, observe this, je ne parle pas bien anglais, parler is to speak, je is I, so in, in a positive form you'd say, je parle bien anglais. I speak English well. Bien is well and anglais is English. But because it is in the negative form, you put ne and pa before and after the verb. So you say, je ne parle pas bien anglais. Je n'ai pas cours le mardi. Je ne travaille pas le weekend. I don't work on weekends. Ils ne sont pas français. And so on and so forth. So, part B, respond. Ne or an apostrophe. Sort of a task for you. So you need to pick. Ne comes before, avant le verbe or après le verbe. And pa, does it come avant le verbe or après le verbe? Avant means before and après means after. So which one? Pick, 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 pick one of the two. Pick one of your responses. Does ne come before the verb or after the verb? And pa, does it also come before the verb? Or after the verb. So you can also look at exercise 5 on page 40. Look at exercise 5 on page 40 for more practice on this. 
Now the next thing is phonetic. Phonetic. In phonetic, you are going to écouter et répéter. Écouter is listen. Répéter is to repeat. So écouter et répéter. We'll play the audio so that you listen and repeat. But you also need to make an observation that this word, on, A-N-S, on, it begins with a vowel, but depending on what letter precedes it in the word that comes before it. For example, if it was S before on, then that S becomes or produces sound Z. Z. And if it was a T, it, there is a liaison between that consonant and the first vowel. So um, let's let's have a listen. Then you'll get the examples from there. Phonetic. Activity 11. So listen and repeat. Un an. Deux ans. Quatre ans. Cinq ans. Sept ans. Neuf ans. So those are basically numbers, as you have learned from number one to nine. Un an. You see, un on its own is pronounced as un. You don't say un. But when it comes before on, this a and s, which it refers to years or year, then you pronounce the n. So the last consonant in a word that precedes the first vo vowel in the second one is normally pronounced. So you'll find, for example, do ends with x. But because it comes before on, which begins the vowel, then you say donzo, and so on and so forth. So that's why uh, you'll find, for example, set. Set is seven, ends with t. And you'll hear the sound seto, dozo, seto, and so on and so forth. Let's listen to the next part. Activité 11B. Deux ans. Trois ans. Sept ans. Huit ans. Six ans. Vingt ans. 30 ans, 10 ans, 40 ans, 11 ans, 50 ans, 12 ans, 60 ans, 13 ans, 14 ans, 15 ans, 16 ans. Page 29, we have Aide de mémoire. En Aide de mémoire, we have Les jours de la semaine. Les jours de la semaine. And remember, we have already talked about Tuesday. There's somebody who has classes on Tuesday and another one who does not have on Tuesday afternoon and so on and so forth. So we need to take note of les jours de la semaine. Les jours de la semaine, days of the week. So we have lundi, mardi, mercredi, jeudi, vendredi, samedi, dimanche. That starts from Monday to Sunday. Um, the next item is how to say your age. Remember, when you are asking somebody, what is your age? In English, you would say, how old are you? In French, literally speaking, if you were to translate it directly into English, it would sound like, 
what age do you have? What age do you have? That is the direct translation, which makes no sense in English, but that is how it is written in French, to mean how old are you. So uh, you'd ask, quel âge at you? Quel âge at you? But then the response would be, so in this case we are talking of dire l'âge. Here, we are talking of dire l'âge. Dire l'âge is to say, uh, to say age, or to say your age. And so if you say, j'ai 23 ans, j'ai 23 ans, then simply means, I am 23 years old. I am 23 years old. J means I have. 23 years. So you'd simply directly translate I have 23 years, but that is wrong. So it is, uh, it has the meaning of I am 23 years old. So you say J 23 ans. If in plural, you remember the conjugation of the verb avoir, so you'd say they are 23 years old. Ils ont 23 ans, and so on and so forth. The next thing is about l'adjectif possessive. That's the same way it is in English. In English, we also have possessive adjectives. So you'll say, my, your, his or her, their, our, and so on and so forth. So if I want to say, for example, my name, I would say, mon nom, mon nom, mon, mon nom. Mo simply refers to my. And it is mo because no is masculine. If at all it was a noun that is feminine, then you'd say ma. Remember, in French, adjectives follow the nouns depending on whether the noun is masculine or feminine. So masculine nouns will also have masculine adjectives and feminine nouns should have feminine adjectives so adjectives behave like nouns in this case therefore no is a masculine noun so you'd say mon no uh, nationalité is feminine noun so you'd say ma nationalité you cannot say mon nationalité you will say ma nationalité now mo is masculine ma is feminine in plural both of them become me so in plural whether it is masculine or feminine, you simply say me. So you'd say mesitude, mesitude, my studies. In uh, the second person plural, you'd say votre langue. Now here, there is something to pay attention to. As we said previously, you, that is vous, can be used to signify more than one person. You in plural. But vous can also be used to signify one person as long as that person, or to show respect. So you, vous can also be used for one person to show respect. So in this case, you could say votre langue, your language. Your language in referring to one person that you respect or to many people. And then you would also say votre âge. Now, when you use votre, when you use votre, whether it is masculine or feminine, it, is, it remains votre langue, votre âge, votre profil, and so on and so forth. This one does not change. And so, in plural, it becomes vos. So you say vos contacts, votre langue, votre âge, votre profil, vos contacts, and so on and so forth. Um, you can also have a look at... Um, Exercise 6 on page 40 and practice more of that on page 40. So now um, the task for you next is uh, Are you able now to say how old you are in French? If somebody asks you, quel âge as you? What would you say? J'ai and so on and so forth. Quel âge avez-vous? J'ai and so on and so forth. So we go to activity 13. Activity 13, we are simply supposed to um, retrouver dans la liste suivante les matières étudiées par Roberto Ming Even. So 
when you look at um, the profiles of the three um, students that we had looked at earlier, then you should be able to tell from that their profile. Retrouver dans la liste, that is, find out from the list below, list suivante, that is here, this one here. Les matières étudiées par Roberto Ming et Evan. So you need to find out among these courses which ones are studied by Roberto and which ones are studied by Ming and which ones are studied by Ven. And then you, et vous, and you, quelle matière étudiez-vous? Which course are you studying? And you, which, study, uh, which course are you studying? Quelle est votre matière préférée? Which is your preferred course? And quelle est votre matière spécialité? Quelle est votre matière spécialité? And which one is your specialty? Now, just as an exercise for you, um, you, we are assuming that you also wanted to register on that website. So now, write your profile. You can have, you can refer to the profiles written by the three uh, students and also write a similar one. This is the template. So, uh, vous faites votre inscription sur l'interlingua. That is to say that you are doing your registration on l'interlingua. Complétez votre profil. Complete your profile. Précisez votre nom, votre âge, votre ou bien uh, votre ou vos langues, vos études. Dites pourquoi vous utilisez interlingua. So here you are supposed to complete your profile. Precisely say your name, your age, your language, your courses or your studies. And say why, dites pourquoi, say why vous utilisez interlingua. Say why you are using interlingua. You remember these other guys uh, ticked. Uh, whatever other reasons why they were using interlingua. So you could also do the same. You can as well look at their profile and select among them. That is section B. Regardez les profils interlingua des autres étudiants et sélectionnez vos contacts. Now, in this case, if you are in a group of class, it would be possible to each one of you to write their profile and then you'd make, uh, you'd select who among them you'd want to get in touch with but being that you may be doing this online and you are alone then it may not be necessary so that brings us to uh, the end of lesson one dossier un lesson un so we will move next time to dossier un lesson deux